And I'm Bill McAtee. We'll also take you to the brave new world of comic books. They are bigger, they're wilder, and they aren't just for kids anymore. Well, comic books are starting to go where no comic book has gone before. Comics have been released from the bonds of juvenile writing and one-dimensional superheroes. They have reached such a startling new form that some prefer to call them graphic novels. And in our cover story, we find they are evolving faster than you can say, Shazam! In this comic book is a love story, a boy and girl in love. They get married, and after an offensively lurid description, illustrated, of course, of the couple's wedding night, the book shows how the bride murders her husband by chopping his head off with an axe. This comic book describes a sexual aberration so shocking that I couldn't mention even the scientific term on television. I think there ought to be a law against them. Tonight I'm going to show you why. Comic books back in the day weren't always silly and campy like you remember. In the days of Dr. Frederick Wortham, comic books were horror-filled and shocking, with books like Crime Suspension Stories, Tales from the Crypt, Crypt of Horror, Nightmare Suspension Library, and of course, a classic, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now, Dr. Frederick Wortham had something to say about these comic books. The real question is this. Are comic books good or are they not good? If you want to raise a generation that is half stormtroopers and half cannon fodder with a dash of illiteracy, then comic books are good. In fact, they are perfect. Now let's hear what the government had to say about these comic books. Books. Paul, we had an extensive hearing in New York some months back, and we've had other hearings in other parts of the country. I was amazed to find a number of comic books being published each month in the United States. We found about a hundred million. Of these hundred million going out, uh, approximately eighty million are all right, they're funny, entertaining, some of them are educational, but about twenty million were of the horror and crime and crime type in which we are particularly interested. The government only wanted to control horror books. Dr. Frederick Wortham had other plans. He wanted to stop all comments, and he almost got away with it. If it weren't for the Comments Code Authority, we wouldn't have the comments we have today. We probably even wouldn't have comments. But the Comments Code Authority had its own issue. Famous comic book writer Stan Lee was alive during this moment in history. Here is his opinion on the Comets Code. Um, when, do, when, when did the Comics Code Authority come into being? Was that early in, in, in your run at, at Timely, or was it when you were at Oh, when no, it was, it, was, it was with Marvel. And what was that about? Why? Why did they need it? Wait a minute, I'm not sure. I, you know, I have such a bad... I, I, was, I was serious about my memory. I don't remember the date. I think it might have been when we had the superhero stories, I think. It came into being because some psychiatrist named Frederick Wortham decided that all the ills of mankind were caused by comic books. Without any reasonable doubt and without any reservation that comic books are an important contributing factor in many cases of juvenile delinquency. And he wrote a book called Seduction of the Innocent, in which he pretty much said that. And somehow the book got into, the, into Congress, and they had a hearing, and they were about to censor all the comic books or outlaw them. or It was a big thing. 
and the comic book publishers got together and they formed a self-regulatory, self-censorship group called the Comic Book Association of America. And uh, somehow or other, they got away with it. It hurt a lot of people. I got to tell you what I think is a funny story about that. I had done a book called Kid Colt Outlaw, a Western book. And one of the pages was thrown back at us. And I'll, I want to tell you why it was thrown back. I had one, uh, Jack Keller was the artist, and he drew Kid Colt shooting a gun. But you didn't see Kid Colt. He just, it was a close-up of his hand. Think of this as the panel, and here's his hand, and this is the gun. He's holding the gun, and there's a big puff of smoke coming from the barrel and a line indicating the trajectory of the bullet. That's all you saw in the panel. The hand, the gun, the puff of smoke, and the line. And the page was sent back. This was panel three, let's say. And the criticism was, panel three is too violent. So I called whoever was the supervisor of the code at that time, and I said, why is panel three too violent? And the answer I got was, the puff of smoke is too big. I swear, I swear to God. So, being the creative person I am, I got some white paint and I whited out that puff of smoke and I did a little puff of smoke and a line and it was accepted. And that was an example, that's an example of the wisdom and perception of those people who ran the comic book code. But um, they... You know, it's meaningless. I don't even think they're in existence anymore. After realizing that it was hurting the industry, the Comet Street Authority was slowly abandoned, leaving both writers and nerds alike to rejoice. For some generations, this debate continues, taking new forms as it goes forward. We might have won this battle, but will we win the war? <laughs>